Juan X the Don, Seth Mustis, you know what's going on. She bring you out round seventeen recap. Man. Shit, season damn near over, bro. Like six more weeks to go after this shit. Yeah. shit crazy. Any major takeaways this round? We're probably gonna have the same one again like we did last week. The major upsets for the most part is what I don't think anybody can really deny is the major thing this week. Uh, or the most obvious one, I would say. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely a lot of. If you got all your tips right this round, I don't believe you. Hell no. Especially this late in the season, too, where people already kind of think they have an idea what's going on. And that. Nope. Let's go ahead and get into the games. First game we got Port versus Melbourne. Port the Pretenders. That's gonna be their name because they just can't seem to be the top A side. Well they be one, right? They be one one top A side all season. Uh, I can't remember who they be on top eight. I think I think they had beat one team, was it Sydney? Like Sydney got their first win against Port. I can't remember. Nah, first game of the season, Sydney had an upset against Brisbane or Geelong. It's too far away, but you get my attention. But uh, Port the Pretenders, uh, Melbourne didn't have their best game offensively, but um, I think the team structure, I think these teams, okay, so beforehand, I, I, I've been on record to say I think both of these teams are uh, two complete teams on paper. Um, but Port doesn't seem to win the big games. Melbourne has, but they lost some games to some uh, questionable competition. So you really don't know what's going on with either one, but I did believe more in Melbourne. And they just seem to get it done around the, the ball area. And Port has Robbie Gray. I think they could have used him this game, but you know you can't just be spoiled and have all your good players every game. So Melbourne just got it done. And Port's continue to be struggling and they're sorry as hell. Uh, Port the Pretenders. Ring a bell? <laughs> what? Not really. <laughs> I was just getting a call of Collie Wobbles. Uh, but yeah, like you said, on paper, both these teams look good. On paper, I think both these teams are evenly matched. Uh, honestly, if I just name off players that I know that can play good, I think I could name more players from Port. But they just don't show up in the big games, the games that really matter, the top eight games. Uh, they. They're just not there for that, and that's really been hurting them all season long. And I really don't care what their ladder position is right now. They're not going to make it past the first round in the eighth, well, in the finals if, if they make it, which they should. But they, you can't just win all your games against shitty teams and expect to do something. Uh, as far as Melbourne, bro. Trying to think what them boys did to really turn up. You know, Kazi had a few goals. Uh, oh, Fritch. Fritch's goal when he. When he. No. Matter of, they had a few goals. McDonald is the. That boy been turning up. It's the most memorable one. McDonald had a goal. He had a set kick. Got that shit smothered. But he chased down after the ball, teammate got it to him. He ran outside, out of bounds, back in bounds, and then did a little with a snap kick, banana, whatever. Scored the goal, and then it definitely turned up. Uh, Bobby Frisch had a dribble goal that was fine as fuck. Uh, it was just a lot of good play from from Melbourne that you didn't. I feel like a lot of times I don't see Melbourne turn up offensively. It's usually the defense that gets them involved, but this game, they had a lot of offensive plays that I really like, so. Shout out to Melbourne. I don't know what else to say about that shit. <laughs> Libra had a good game, but you know, usually always does. Um, that's about it. Okay. All right, next game we got Essendon versus Adelaide. Trash. Uh, Adelaide, sorry as hell. Like, they never showed up this whole game. Yeah, they um, they didn't show up like to begin the game. They didn't even show up. Boys wanted to join the twenties club, right? Facts. Oh, <laughs> um, Essendon really had a slow start too. They were kind of looking like Adelaide early on, and Essendon just said it was able to catch on and turn up. 
Adelaide never got anything going, bro. Like, I think they got their first goal, like, sometime in the second quarter late. And then they got another one around the same time a little bit later on, like maybe the third quarter or second quarter. After that, it was really nothing. I didn't expect Essendon to blow them out like this because I do have some type of respect for Adelaide a little bit uh, because they, they have proved me wrong on occasions. But they're starting to fizzle out and go back to the original spot that people, I, I think most people had them on the ladder in the preseason, um, even and out towards the bottom. And uh, Essendon, this, this wasn't a be a, 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 the best game that Essendon could play. Uh, Sam Draper had that missed goal right in front of the goal and didn't make the distance. It wasn't like it was wide or, you know what I'm saying, that, that shit was pretty trash too. Uh, cause so, so considering everything, Essendon could have played better. Adelaide definitely could have played better, but I'm not high on Adelaide at all. Like, this is, it's crazy how they started hot and now they're just, hmm. Yeah, um. Uh... No Tex, no Adelaide. I kind of expected this ass whoop. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. They, Adelaide really couldn't get shit going. And without their leader on the field, it, it was just looking sad for them. Essendon has great defensive pressure already. And they were really just able to expose it with the injured Adelaide. And, uh... That's what they're making a little fight for the eight. They, they are definitely in that conversation of a game away from making the eight, I believe. Um, trying to think who I saw that game turn up. I know Tip had that big collision. He did have a nice goal too, he but he knocked somebody out on accident. Um, <laughs> can't remember too much from Stringer. Did he do anything? Uh, I think he had like one. I see. I know Hooker had an early goal that was decent. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know. He, like I said, it, it was a slow game at start. SNN kind of found a groove, and Adelaide never did, and this was just the results of that. 84 to 21. Welcome to the 20s club. Welcome to the bottom of the 20s club, Adelaide. <laughs> Next game, we got Hawthorne versus Frio. <laughs> and, bruh, how did y'all let Frio win like this, bruh? Frio is already on the verge of it. They in the eight now. They're number seven now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, this damn shit should not have went like this. It's like, there's no way. For, Frio's not even that good. Granted, the Hawks aren't good either. <laughs> but come on, bruh. Hawks were at home. Wait, this... I think this was in Tasmania. It uh, was in Tasmania. That's why I thought Fox would win. But it's just like, bro. Frio has creeped up the fucking ladder the past few weeks. Like, I'm pretty sure they were at 14 at one point this season. Now they're all the way at 7, bro. Luckily, in the left, rest of their season, I think they got tough games. But come on, y'all, bro. What happened? You were supposed to stop Frio all year. Nigga, y'all just let these niggas walk into the finals. We went live for this game, and we were just surprised that Frio was just doing them. Like, it, it got to the point. I never thought I would see a, game, a point where we would be watching a Frio game and be so bored due to Frio's dominance, due to Frio winning, like, to the point where we were interested in the chat. And all our Aussie homies, uh, Hawks couldn't get shit to go on. It, it, it kind of it's not like the the Essendon game, but it was a domination in, in the same kind of form. Except Frio played better than Essendon did. Frio actually had a decent amount of goals. Rory Live was playing good. Uh, Frio was just playing strong team football, man. They are like as they push for that final spot. It seems like they're the team. If I had to pick, that they're the one that wants it the most. Uh, they. They're not the team with the most defensive pressure, but they they seem to have pressure offensively on the teams, uh, and try to put pressure on the team's defense. And they've been doing that the last couple of weeks. They've been getting the opportunities and they've been scoring uh, more efficiently than they have earlier in the season, I would say. Uh, but we'll see. You still got a couple more games to go, so it's interesting to see where they'll land. Hopefully, after the eight, but. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, also, CJ got hurt. I think he's out for the rest of the season. I think it's an yep. MCL yep. injury. So, yeah, Hawks, y'all might as well go ahead and take that 18 spot. Get the silver spoon. 
That one's gonna be north, but it's looking more like a hawk thing. Hey, Avon. Say what? Say hey, Avon. Hey, Avon. Avon and Jammer. Disappointed. Shit. <laughs> Speaking of disappointed. <laughs> Next game, we got Carlton versus Geelong. The motherfuckers that couldn't get one of the upsets. Shout out to us. We fucking suck. Alright, uh, going into this, this is where my mindset was. Boom, okay. New Jeremy Cameron got hurt with the hamstring. I was like, alright, so it'll be a pretty decent matchup considering Liam Jones and Weedering versus Rowan and, and uh, Tom Hawkins. But guess what? Pre-game, Liam Jones out. Back stress or some shit. So I'm like, oh, yep, we fucking lost. So, let's get into the game. Uh... We played straight. We played we played decent the whole game. I will I'm on lie. We played decent. Ball movement looked great. We just couldn't score for shit. We could not score for shit. We had one goal for the longest time. At one point we were one for twelve. One goal, twelve behinds. And we had more opportunities. Well not at the end of the game. Um but most of the game, up think up until the fourth quarter, we had the most opportunities. And we still just could not finish it. No matter how close we were. No matter how smooth the ball movement, no matter where the set shot was, each side, we just could not get shit going. Um, and it's disappointing because that is one of our best efforts uh, that we put. We took it to Geelong. Granted, I think our defense held up and made Geelong not be able to play their most comfortable game. Uh, so holding them to 70 points, I think, is a good feat. But we have to score more than 44. There's no way we have the Coleman leader scoring 44 points. And he's contributing to some of the missed goals, too. So... <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, it was definitely the missed goals. You got to score the goals to win the games. Uh, Jalon came out, and they kind of just adjusted. They had a slow start, but they they played through it. Uh, I think who really set them off was Gary Rohan. He just started catching everything <coughs> inside the 50. Uh, he, he was definitely somebody that I was surprised with this game. I really don't. I've heard a lot about Gary Rohan, but I haven't seen how dominant he could be until this game. So shout out to bruh. Uh, did Jeremy Cameron ain't play at all? So what ain't played? It. Y'all definitely should have had this game. From through the first three quarters, it's just Carlton was missing their shots, man. It's that's all it came down to, man. They was in. Y'all was in the y'all four fifty a bunch. Oh, no pressure. <laughs> they, they have said that this league, this year has been one of the most inaccurate years. I don't know what it is about this year that makes people inaccurate, but they definitely bit us in the ass this game, for sure. Can't even talk too much shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, fuck it. Next game, we have Brisbane versus Saints. <sighs> and this starts the upsets. Yeah, Brisbane didn't start off too good, man. This game did not start good at all because Brisbane, at the end of the first quarter, lost Eric Hipwood. Um, this was detrimental to the team, especially because Charlie Cameron was kind of quiet early, uh, well, most of the game. Uh, I think he had, like, like, two disposals early in the game, but that was about it. So you have a forward that goes down with the knee injury, young forward, 23 years old, I think. And then you have Danaher, who's older, and then you have Cameron, who are – you know what I'm saying? Highly heralded forward line, and if you can't get anything for pretty much none of them, you're not going to have the best game, especially against a team that's desperate and hungry and already naturally brings pressure, pressure and that's their style, and them pushing for the eight. I don't think this is the game that you, you really need that to, uh, to happen to you. Um, but but St. Kilda took Brisbane out of their comfort zone. It didn't look like Brisbane had this, the beautiful, smooth ball movement and transition that they always seem to have. They didn't seem to have the, you know what I'm saying, the clearest ball movement either, but St. Kilda, Max King had a nice couple moments. Like, they, there was okay, so there was a couple injuries this game. But so one thing I also noticed is, uh, Memory, Memory got involved in this game, and he looks like he can elevate St. Kilda when he does play well. But as we seen earlier in the season, when they're not playing, they're not winning. Tim Memory's not playing well either, so he are virtually non-existent. Uh, so Brisbane, it was a big disappointment in this game. St. Kilda was impressive, I'll give you that. Uh, but you need to lose a couple games. Though. All right, so the first quarter of this game was virtually scoreless, I think. I think it was like 3-3 to damn near the end of the quarter, and then both teams had a late goal. 
it was like they were just trying to fill each other out that first little bit of the game. But it, it really came down to Saints defense being better. Saints defense in midfield being better than Brisbane's. Uh, a lot of the scoring opportunities that the Saints had was off just good pressure, good defense, just like how they beat. The games they win, it's off good pressure. It, it definitely showed this game. Uh, man, I can't believe the Saints are making making this fight for the 8-2. Uh, this was definitely a game that the Saints had to win for a chance. Mm -hmm. And Brisbane, y'all really just keeping the door open for all the other teams to just creep in there. Um, <laughs> it seems like all the top teams are just letting it, like letting little niggas fight for it. Yeah, yeah. But the Saints, like they defense is probably one of the best in in the league. Uh, to a point, they even made the midfield look good because it definitely wasn't the midfield that was doing the work. It was just good pressure when. Uh, the Brisbane was kicking out of their back 50, just keeping pressure on the ball. Like, I, that's probably the theme of Saints, good pressure, good pressure, good pressure, because that's what they got. That's how they win games. Mm -hmm. Until they are able to do more, though, I don't think they'll go too far. They need it on the offensive side, but they definitely have a good foundation. They, they just missing a, key, a few key players. I think the Saints is going to be a tough team to beat. I agree because I haven't seen Brisbane really tap out in the fourth quarter the way that they did this game. It was it was close. I wouldn't say it was like a. I guess you could say it was a decent game, but there were skill errors that you can criticize. But you know that's every game. Um, but yeah, like Saint Kilda, like you said, there are other things that they need. Uh, like I mentioned, memory. Like Max King isn't really reliable at his age, and so if if memory can be there and, and give some type of forward option or if, or somebody else at least to be honest, if if it's not just Max King. Then they can look good, but you don't really get that every game. So until they get that, they're gonna be a question mark. So, all right, next game <laughs> we got GWS versus Gold Coast Suns. You say this is the game of the week? Nah, I, no. I would say next game. My opinion. Okay. Uh, well, I would say this is the game of the week in my opinion. Uh, GWS versus Gold Coast, the two newer teams in the league, the two newest teams. Uh, Gold Coast was surprisingly played decent. Gold Coast is never going to really give you all them, the points that you're looking for, the scoring option, but they'll, when they win their games, they'll level you down to where they need you at. They'll, they'll take you down with the defense, and they'll try to grind out the win, and that's what they did this game. It was like, to the very last kick, it was it was a pretty decent game. Um, GWS, they, they looked desperate on the last possession trying to get that goal in, but they couldn't get it, man. They couldn't. They just needed a point. Bro. They needed one point. And didn't they have a set shot at the end? It was Toby? Some, somebody miss it? Miss it? Yeah, it was a yeah, it was a set shot. Uh, yeah, this he, was... He kicked it short instead of trying to kick it far, I think. And he, like, kicked it towards a contested uh, mark. Yeah. Type shit. Yeah, but Greenwood, he got fucked up. So he, he's out, man, unfortunately. So... As far as upsets, I don't see Gold Coast getting any more upsets when your leader's gone. Um, was it the ACL? It was some type of major injury. I think he's out for the season, too. Yeah, uh, Yeah, Giants, this isn't a game that you could afford if you're trying to retain your spot in eight. Well, now you got booted out because of this game. Uh, this is definitely, I think this was might have been a trap game where GWS, I don't think GWS is really the type to look at a team and be like, okay, y'all y'all really suck because they're the type to play hard, so they, I think they have that game, recognized game mentality where it's like, okay, this team plays tough, we're going to have to play tough too. And I don't think they got punched in the mouth, but I think Gold Coast did hit them harder than they used to get hit, though, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I don't want to say GWS came in light or easy, but it, it didn't feel like... It didn't feel like a GWS game. I, although I do think they score like in the first minute, like just off uh, the opening bounce. That might be a different game. I'm not sure, but th this was definitely a back and forth game all the way through for all four quarters. Uh, still fuck with Toby Green. Toby Green did have that first goal like 30, 40 seconds into the game. 
from right outside the 50. Toby Green also had another crazy ass goal where the ball was like coming in. It was about to go past the goddamn uh, goal post. I think somebody, it was about to be a touch behind. And Toby Green had just stuck his foot out, kicked that bitch in, like, right? Once again, some shit I've never seen before on footy, but he made that shit work. It was a goal, and that shit was fire. <laughs> uh, goal coach just, bro, they stuck it out through the end. I think going into the four, uh, GWS had the lead, and goal coach had like two or three just unanswered goals. And put GWS in panic mode, and they just couldn't get it done. In the end of the quarter, Gold Coast really buckled down and stopped them from getting that one point because they were they were trying. They were in the 450 for like a good 40, 45 seconds, and just Gold Coast uh, defense was just good enough to stop them from getting one point. So I definitely recommend that. I I commend that. It was definitely one of the the best in last minute of the game I've seen just from all the effort from both teams uh, but nah this doesn't make the game of the, of the round for me I'm gonna have to go with the next one anything else about that shit? nope uh, nah so next game we got the Bulldogs versus Sydney and I'll say this is the best game of the round because the the whole team of both these teams got involved for a majority of the uh, game. You saw a lot of plays go from 150 to the other 50 and then back to the other 50. Uh, it was a lot of good hustle, good ball movement. Just This this was a finals type game in my opinion. It was a lot of high level play, good ball movement. Just This is a game you can sit down and look at it and be like, oh, I should do this when I'm playing or I should do this. Like it, it was definitely some. This what what you would look for from a professional footy game, and I, for that, it's the game of the round. For me, uh, Buddy didn't get involved. Counting counting down Buddy's uh, road to a thousand. This game did not help him. I think he had one goal this game. But all in all, the young boys on Sydney just wanted this game more. They played a little harder. Uh, but it was a battle to the end. Uh, whoever Papley was matched up against, that shit was a good ass matchup all game. I can't remember the brand name or who it was. Um, was it Daniel Wood? I don't think so. I don't think so. Isaac King, he had a, it, was, it was just a lot of five moments in this game for both teams. Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this was a good game too, no doubt. Uh, I guess I probably would put this as. Uh, there's a couple, there's a lot of good games this week, don't care. Okay, anyways. Uh, Sydney, alright, so one thing I took away from this game Sydney's a whole different team when they play with confidence. Uh, when they play with confidence, they're a hard team to beat, especially when Buddy. It, Buddy didn't get, like you said, Buddy didn't get too involved with this game. He had that one moment, and it was later in the game. Uh, but imagine if Buddy comes out with two or three goals and the team's confident. That's, that's sure. something scary, you get what I'm saying? So, uh, I think Sydney really had Bulldogs out of the element this game. They didn't look as comfortable as they usually do. Uh, I think, I don't know if it's too far to say the Bulldogs are a slightly different team when they're trying to play from behind. Uh, yeah, like you said, Papley had his moments. He had a nice couple moments. I liked him. I liked Isaac Heaney. Uh, midfield from Sydney played pretty good. Uh, Bulldogs just didn't. I think Bruce had a couple little moments, but they, they uh, Bulldogs were missing Norton this week because um, he had that whole head injury uh, that he had. I think they could have used him. Definitely could have used him considering how he's been playing in recent weeks. Um, but I don't think Aaron Norton is their their one savior. I don't think the forward line is necessarily the issue this game. Um, but yeah, Sydney's a scary team. They look so they finished 11, 11 uh, goals, 13 behind. They could have played a lot better, uh, more efficient, and they gave themselves more opportunities. So I don't know, man. I, they look like they they're trying to get that that good ass position the best that they can in, in the finals, and so they can For let sure. their leader buddy go off. Hopefully, he gets that thousand. I hope so. But, I hope so too. That's it about that shit. Next game, 
<laughs> Next thing we got Richmond Tigers versus the Kali. Can't even call them the Kali Wobbles right now. Against Collingwood. Richmond, you sorry as fuck. You lost four in a row. Lost to the Collingwood boys. 71-87. There was no reason to lose this game. Let's put it that way. Richmond started off hot. Collingwood usually starts off hot. Didn't. That right there should mean Collingwood should lose. But what happened? No. No, you let Collingwood get into it a little bit, you know. The goalie has his nice little moments. Uh, who else turned that one to? Uh, Mason Cox. Mason Cox had, had a couple of little shits. Darcy Cameron had a couple of little marks. It's, Richmond was up so comfortably in the fourth quarter, or at the fourth quarter, or third quarter time. And they smoke. Wow. Was it, it wasn't 30, was it? Was it 30? How many people? It was there, near 30. It, it was about 30, and you smoked that shit, and you let Collingwood just come and run y'all ass. Just run, run, run. And this is a premiership team. <sighs> Fuck out of here. Y'all trash. Richmond, you get no respect. 12th man, you get no respect. 12th man. Hopefully, you get down more than 12th man, because I'm going to enjoy this the fucking ladder change. Oh, man. Collingwood, you didn't play well. I wouldn't say this was a great game for you at all, but this is something that you can build on. Uh, going into next week, I am a little bit worried considering how strong they ended. And uh, I wonder if that momentum is going to come into us next week. Uh, but I do salute the effort. Anytime there's a great comeback, I definitely have to applaud it. I know it's hard. A long-ass game, long-ass physical-ass game, and you pull some, pull a strong effort to overcome a team that knows how to win games. So definitely salute to Collingwood. Uh, don't tell nobody I said that. And I don't know what the fuck is going on with Richmond. <laughs> 12th man. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad we saw West Coast start this shit off with they losing streak. Because if not, we would be the team that looks like the most shit in the AFL right now. But we'll get there next. Uh, Richmond, bro. <laughs> like, how do y'all go from Premier Streets to Peking? Should be on the verge of a three P and one the year before. Uh West Coast one. West Coast Eagles all day every day. Uh, so how I don't even understand how y'all how having such a sharp decline, just a fall off to shitty teams. Like West Coast it was understandable. Was understandable at, at that time, what we fifteen when we beat y'all. Our Saint Kilda, fourteen, man. yeah, and then y'all are Saint Kilda with Essen in there. Gold Coast, Gold, Gold, Gold Coast, Coast. and then these and then Collie Wobbles, bro. It's like y'all are just getting taken out, and y'all are just moving down the fucking ladder. You bro. know what they got next week? Who? Brisbane. Oh my god! You know what they got the week after that? Yeah, so they gonna <laughs> take him beat, bro. Geelong. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Richmond, y'all, y'all finals chances might be through. It's through. Boy, it is that shit over with. It is. Through. I don't see what as much as y'all hate. Uh, Dusty up. I don't see him making making a comeback. With yeah, six right. games left in this this uh, season, and they got tough teams. Yeah, bro. I don't know, boy. Them boys might be over with. Over to Collingwood. Why the fuck y'all cut Mason Cox out so long? It, like, bro, he he came back on y'all team, and he's been turning up ever since. Like, <laughs> it was just y'all didn't want want to play with an American or some shit. I know he has. Yeah. From what I hear, we like fucking under 12s. But come on, that's Mason Cox. He's the best of the Americas. Give him some, give him some play time and y'all win games, Collie Wobbles. That's yeah. what y'all been missing out the whole time. Apparently, they yeah. Shit, even the last game, they almost had a comeback in the fourth, but just didn't have enough time. Yeah. So, give that boy Mason Cox some time. Stop, stop playing with the American life. <laughs> Richmond is so disappointing. Because they have moments where they look great, like... Bolton had some nice moments in there, bro. You have Lynch back in all this. Rewall had a nice mark, bro. It's like, what are you doing, though? Shit crazy. I'm just glad Richmond is so ass because they make us look not as bad. <laughs> all right, so the next and final game, West Coast Seagulls versus North. We're still West Coast Seagulls all day, every day. You know that, but this one it, bro. This was not fucking it. Uh, let me tell you, bro. Let me tell you so many things that's wrong with all this shit I'm looking at right now, bro. First of all, we playing against North. The worst team by by the ladder. The worst team in the league right now. That's one thing. 
We're playing in Optus. Supposed to be undefeatable in Optus. But we even got smacked three times the last three times we was in fucking Optus. And only one of them was an elite team. It's another thing. Uh, what else? Then it was another bad weather game. And that should not be a fucking excuse, bro. We was even at home this time. Like, I don't understand, bro. It's a wet ball. Y'all need to just get a fucking rain simulator in the training field or some shit. Just sprinkle some water on the field and just have that shit running and play through it because y'all are so ass in the <laughs> Like, and then we had, it's like, we, they beat us in the fourth. North doesn't even play four quarters, bruh. And they beat us in the fourth. We had the lead in the fourth and made a bigger lead in the fourth. And they took the, all that shit away. They came back on us halfway through the fourth and whooped our ass, bro. Ain't even no ass whoop, but it's North, so it is an ass whoop. Any other team in the lead, this would have been... This might have been another 90-point loss if this was any other fucking team, bro. So, like, this... I, I'm, the final hope for me is out the window, bro. I just want to see some type of... The air is gone. Nick Nack, Josh Kennedy, Jack Darling, Shuey, Sherm. Your time's up, man. Y'all just need to train these new players because this was the year they all had to win. And y'all are just folding it. Y'all don't want it. Sorry, Nick Nack. You might not get a, uh, no ring or no chip in your career, bro. But... Y'all just don't want it, bro. Y'all losing to North. North doesn't even have a chance to make the eight, and y'all losing, bro. We are fighting. We just got passed by Frio on the fucking ladder, bro. They're above us. Percentage and all, bro. Like, I don't even know what to say no more, bro. He summed up a lot of it. Let's go ahead and out this with the wet weather game. The one, okay, so I had, I had some things I think that needed to be added. So, for some reason, something about this game in particular, North wanted to come with a chip on their shoulder and wanted to get physical and wanted to fight. Because they definitely was, they were trying to fight this game, bro. And then West Coast definitely was with it. You know, West Coast fighting team, they'll bring the smoke too. But I didn't expect North to come out fiery trying to fight all the time, bro. It was like four different occasions I think I seen little scuffles, bro. Um... North, they, they looked like they were just playing harder. They they got on West Coast last week for the work rate against Sydney, and I think they were up most of the game, but I didn't see really hard work from West Coast. I seen more hard work from North, even though I think, okay, so this is where I'm at with it. So I think West Coast didn't work as hard, but has more skills and relied on their skills earlier in the game. Um, but at some point, the wet weather got too much, or North's effort got just uh, more intense, and they wanted it, and their skills ended up working because they they had some moments like there was, I think there was a moment where Davies Uniac was just doing spins in the fucking four fifty, and they ended up getting a goal off that. I think he how it ended, but it, it was something where it was like, bro, you should tackle that man. You should have been tackled him. Um, I definitely didn't expect this result, but I, I I'm surprised, but I'm. Least surprised because it's coming more at a time where North is getting more comfortable and it, it is playing better at the end of the season. So um, they held their own against the dogs. They got smacked a little bit, but you know they're, they're playing comfortable at the end of this year. And I think they're having some. They're, they're having. They're playing with pride and they want something to build off going into next year. And I think they're doing that. And also they are coming back with people who's been injured. I know they were injury injury inflicted team earlier in the season. So it's interesting seeing that they're actually some type of a decent team. West Coast, we ass. Anyways, that's all the games around 17. 17. Uh, let's go to this ladder. Oh, before I forget, Paul Pepper turned up this week. Oh, Paul Pepper was something different, bro. I Sam mean, Paul. That boy was turning the fuck up. He was everywhere, bro. He was teleporting. Yeah, bro. I, think that, I, I used. I think he took my place how I used to respect Adam side. Paul Pepper might be that nigga, bro. <laughs> Paul Pepper might be that one. Ah, uh, man. 
Look at this ladder, though. God damn, Richmond. Richmond dropped. Four in a row, bro. Dash is so sorry. Oh, that's that's so sorry. oh you and Adelaide breaking a one of y'all breaking a losing streak this week. Adelaide. On three. Richmond, <laughs> funniest shit with four L's in a row. I, I'm, you don't know how happy I am that Richmond's doing bad just so we're not the worst fucking team, bro. Because niggas will be on our ass. Who kind of almost almost lost? Who, who did they almost compete against last year? Was it Essen there? Cover over there. Saints. So Saints been on a nice little win streak too. Yeah. Three wins. They look like, are they the hottest team right now? Saints got the biggest win Saints, streak. Saints the hottest team in the league right now, bro. I never thought. Saints the best team that Richmond the worst. I don't know what else to say about this week, bro. I just know we we have another game that we can we might be able to win and break the streak. If we don't win against Adelaide, bro, it's definitely over. I've really been saying it's over for the past two weeks, but we lose Adelaide, we lose two of the bottom three teams. Oh yeah, it's over, over. This is I ain't gonna lie, this is a good week for us. Because if we beat Collingwood, this is this is tough right here, bro. Tough, tough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's a losable game, bro. Not saying it's gonna happen. Tough. Okay, you have fucking Adelaide Frio bad job. Oh, Frio. This is a good week for us, bro, to get back, bro. Wait, who Frio got? Geelong. Oh yeah. Imagine Frio beats fucking. If that happens, I will be. I'm, I promise you, I'm gonna be sick as fuck, bro. I'm gonna be sick as fuck. You're gonna be sick. I'm gonna be living, bro. That shit, bro. We, we, we beat we beat Frio twice, but we can't. But <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I can't bro. believe that shit. Bro. I think this about it for this video. Oh, God damn, wrap this shit up, man. Yeah, I don't think I got much else to say, man. Shout out to Pal Pepper, man. Uh, yeah, SPP, man. For sure. Y'all are full of y'all. We been fucking with y'all. We still fuck with y'all. So check out our lives. Like, comment, subscribe. I can't think of anything else that rhyme. Except that. No cap. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say something. Man. I lost it. So yeah, uh, check out live sometime this weekend, bro. We out this shit. Yeah.